right. All right. Well, Hi, folks. <laughs> we are. Uh, we have returned for another one of our comparisons. Uh, I'm half. He's crispy. Uh, we don't do that a whole lot. Should get better about introducing ourselves. Yeah. Probably. We don't have an intro. We really need to kind of make it a little intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's that's video editing. I barely say it. It's pretty crazy. Ultimately, uh, please introduce us. Like the beers or us? The beers. Uh, <laughs> today we are doing stouts. I believe is what we settled on. So we went with. Both chose stouts, but neither one of us chose similar. Like we didn't go both do breakfast stouts or just a imperial stout or any any particular. We just went stouts. Right. So today I am drinking vanilla bean stout by Aviary Brewing. Aviary. Aviary. Yeah, Aviary. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's the one. <laughs> No, I didn't, because I done fucked it up right after. <laughs> By aviary brew. Aviary brew. I don't know. I'm not sure. I just stumbled on the last part because I was looking back at the first part. <laughs> aviary Brewing Company out of... I should have been more intelligent about this. Boulder, Colorado. It is a vanilla bean stout. Aged in bourbon barrels. Now we've done aged in bourbon before. Yes, we have. Um, it was the rye on rye episode because there was a rye ale that we made aged in bourbon barrels. Mm, yeah, um, and it was lovely. And it was lovely. It was. Um, I am working with the lava out of. It's a pro product of Iceland from. Allesvold, Bruges, Allesvold, Iceland. Oh, thank God, you didn't just push your that. No, I shouldn't have. Um, imported by Van Vandenberg de Wolf, Cooperstown, New York. So, um, it doesn't look like it's imported by one of the big, big companies. It's made in Iceland, from everything that I can tell. Uh, bottled there as well. It is a solid 9.4, which is on the high end of hefty for, for what we do, and it is a smoked imperial stout. I should mention on mine, it is an 11.5. That is the most alcoholic thing we have ever reviewed, hands down. It's not the most alcoholic thing either one of us has come close to drinking. No. But it's the most alcoholic thing we've reviewed on this show, so. Yes. All right. Um, without really further ado, I guess we can just jump right in. Yeah. Yeah, I need damn foil. Oh, yeah. It foiled you again. <laughs> Alas, <laughs> you have foiled me again. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I smell the bread. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got peat and uh, a brine, a packing brine like uh, what you would do for like olives on a on a, you know, in a chicken yeah. barrel or something like that. That's, that's an interesting smell. Well, you've got a couple different things going on for that. Oh one. yeah, it's it's sweet. It's got the the bread smell that. Warm bread smell, and all at the same time, a hint of chocolate. <coughs> so to me, it almost smells like freshly baked chocolate chip cookies. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I hope its flavor lives up to its scent. That is really interesting, yeah. It is, there is like a, a cookie dough sort of yeastiness to it. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited. Prepared. I am excited for that. Yours, yes. Very, a, a salt brine with that smoke flavor. Just, I feel like I just took a whiff <laughs> of like, 
hickory smoke. Yeah. yeah. Just fresh hickory smoke. Like you, you laid the the you got your coals going on your grill and you throw the the soaked hickory onto the the coals to add that little flavor to your steak. Yeah. That's what that is. Mm. That's what I'm smelling right there. It smells delicious. It reminds me of summer. That I think we're about to fall into. Well, I hope so. We've been getting consistently cold weather for out of the blue, apparently. If the Rockies weren't done with us for a while. Yeah. Whew. And as I try and pour that for us, it just... Touch of him. Which I have a feeling that it's going to disperse rather quickly. Yeah, it's already going away. That's fine. Um, it leaves mine. It leaves a a decent little for a, for a beer. It leaves a decent film on the glass when you when you tilt it back it skins the glass yeah a lot more like a wine does like a red wine okay yeah in the whiskey world they refer to that as the legs hmm. yeah. and mine is just <laughs> the darkest thing i've ever seen <laughs> it is the blackness at the edge of our solar system <laughs> now to check the flavor profile again. No, no, no change on mine. It's got a lot more body to it. The sweetness is tapered off a little bit on mine, and I'm catching a little bit more brine now that I've. I've poured it, mm -hmm. so could be, a, could be with 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 all the complex things that have happened to that to get it to where it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. Rolling malts and caramel, like salted caramel, like really, it has, at least right now, very little bitter into it at all. It's got a lot of zest and tang to it that speaks well, I guess, of the hop structure of it, but it's got, it's mostly, the, the mostly the all the notes that the caramel okay. and the smoke is like super powerful. As I'm exhaling mine and I'm drinking it down, I'm getting that heavy brandy right, right across, back across the palate. The brandy's there and you notice it when you're just drinking it normally and it's, it's just the hints. It comes out a lot more when it's, when you're doing the exhale and, and intake all at the same time. The vanilla, it's just the lightest hint. <laughs> it's just the touch of this. Yeah, it's just like, it's like they took a 55 gallon drum, took one bean of it, took one vanilla bean, scraped off all the insides, and went. There you go. <laughs> well, well, maybe. Um, Maybe there's gonna be different levels of it throughout yeah. the uh, throughout the intake, but that is interesting. Could that be. It's not. Now, let me ask you this: Would you notice if the vanilla was there if you didn't know that the vanilla was there? Um, there's a chance. I I don't want to say no, and I don't want to say a definitive yes because there's no way I would know. In either case, it's Schrodinger's effect going on there. Schrodinger's vanilla. <laughs> yeah, Schrodinger's vanilla in this case. 
Vanilla's there not. Um, it's got the standard stout bitter on mine, and it leans very heavy into that coffee flavor. It's nice and smooth chocolate going at the beginning, and then it's the that coffee, just coffee. Mm. So, not your personal favorite. Not my personal favorite. But it is something I will drink. Hmm. Yeah, this this doesn't have as much like uh, espresso coffee as I was expecting. Um, it's, mm. It does it does have more of a cacao or chocolate sort of back to it. But it's got a like I was saying, it's got a heat to it. It's got a certain amount of spice to it that lingers. I don't know where that's coming from. Like I'm not sure how to express that into words. It's like. It's not the usual, like, cold, thick stout, and it has those flavor profiles, and then it pulls that, and it's gone. There's, like, a remainder there that's saying, maybe that's the alcohol content just directly, because they're so acidically alcoholic. I don't know. Not, like, 10% is really vastly alcoholic. Uh, no, not vastly. Let's see if you can, see if you can see what I see. Maybe that's just me. I'm not sure. I uh, should Water. Oh yeah. That is so much more rich now than not outside of the bottle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is like a dessert in of itself just right there. Mm. That flavor that's lingering, it's like peat smoke. Just mm-hmm. sitting. Yeah. No, that is, that's all I'm tasting is like just <laughs> that flavor of a heavy smoked steak. And it's just remove all the flavoring of the steak and just leave that smoky flavor and just let it sit on your tongue. Mm. That's what I'm tasting. Campfires and sticks. <laughs> That's what this is. This this is this is phenomenal. Uh, really it is awesome. good. I love this. There is that you're right that that brandy level, but with the vanilla, you know what it, it reminds me of really is um, a vanilla brandy. <laughs> as horrible as it says, it reminds me of Jack Daniels. The vanilla back of the Jack Daniels Kentucky bourbon. I'm just gonna have to like, nod my head. And, yeah, well, okay. It's, and it's, agree with you because I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about right now. Okay. It has, <laughs> it has a, a vanilla ish or, um, what is it, sarsaparilla sort of like aftertaste. Okay. Um, and so that's what that kind of reminds me of. It's really sweet. It is, it the is sweet very stout sweet. that I think we've had in a while. We haven't done a stout in a while, so... It's been a couple weeks. It's been a couple weeks. We did a... Um, gosh, I don't even remember what the last stout was. It was that um, Jamaican stout, wasn't it? Did we do a Jamaican? Did you do a Jamaican stout? It was the one that was done by the Brits. It was on the Brits. Oh, that was... Yeah. yeah. You did do a Jamaican stout. Yeah, I don't remember that. Now. Still a while ago. Mm-hmm. That was January. That was right after the Christmas break. No. Yeah, yeah it was. Alright, cool. Been four months? About like a decent amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, yours is just like a campfire. Yeah, it, 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 it so is. Like um, I need a I need a large like leather bound book or something to be reading while I'm drinking this. Like yeah, okay. This 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 area does not <laughs> does not feel right at all. No. Yeah, this is large leather bound book while sitting in the the comfort of a deep 
plushy leather chair that just wants to soak you in as you're surrounded by more leather-bound rare books. Right? Yeah. This, this the once yeah once upon a midnight dreary. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, it's great. I've never had, um, I've never had anything out of Iceland. I mean, I've played Eve, Eve Online for many, many years, and that's out of one Eve up on me. It's <laughs> one up on me on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you ever play any of The Witchers? No. Oh. Is that also a nice, produced by an Icelandic company? Uh, it's an Icelandic book series at first. Oh, really? Yes. That. Quick video game information. <laughs> The video games follow directly after the last book. Okay. So which of these two stouts, which did you prefer? Because I know normally you're not a sweets kind of guy. Yeah, no, I'm not. You know, this doesn't even seem like necessarily what I would attribute as an imperial stout. It doesn't have the bitter profile. It doesn't have the um, the mm, usually like a, a, a prune or like a plum note yeah. that I kind of just generally go into walking into Imperials. I assume that you're going to have something mm-hmm. along those lines. It doesn't have any. It's just straight up. You know, it's not Scottish, but Scottish peat bog, just yeah, all the way there, which is it's great in the form that it is. Um, but then again, this yours is really got some really cool tastes that are really complimentary and are just uh, a much more complex creation right there. Way to use their tagline. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that I, I read aloud for everyone to hear. God bless. <clears throat> so are you saying that yours is a little short, but mine no, is my... more stout? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it's not even a handle. And, I mean, that has a spout. <laughs> So God damn it. <laughs> I was wondering how we were gonna work more of that. Oh fuck. Um no, I think they're they're both brilliant stouts. Mm-hmm. Um two different completely different roles yeah. at a dinner table. Yeah. If we were um, to yeah. if we were to serve these at dinner, this would be the the glass that goes up with your main dinner from the grill. Everyone sits down and enjoys their meal. Yeah. Has a delicious flavor complementing the meal. Yeah. This is like what you bring out with the pie. Oh yeah. A little bit of like almo, some vanilla bean, crushed vanilla bean ice cream on the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and maybe like uh, some coffee and espresso. You don't really like it, but a lot of people would really compliment on it. Oh, yeah. That is, yeah, I mean, we could... God, if we had the money to just... We could run an entire dinner from start to finish with the beers that we've collected on oh, yeah. this show and just make the entire evening. It would be not expensive, but I mean, it would be... More than I would like to pay. <laughs> More than I would like to do. Yeah, but if everybody like put in like, oh, yeah. okay. It's, if everybody put in like fifteen dollars a person, we could buy it up in a large enough in bulk. Say we have six guests plus two chefs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that would that would be that'd be doable. Man. Well someday. Someday. But someday we'll be looking back on it, this episode and then we'll be going, now take a look. And we'll have a little table full of guests somewhere, maybe. We'll see. Um, but anyways, they're, they're, they're beautiful. However, in, in respect to the brewer's craft and the level of complexity, I really love what these guys at the Avery 
brewing have done. They're, that's those are really a, a winning combination of brandy, yes, brandy vanilla and a stout. Yeah, that's phenomenal, man. The flavoring almost makes me want to go out and do something I normally don't do and get a brandy. Oh, get a vanilla brandy and see how much of that flavor profile could actually be from their brandy barrels. I can't even remember the last time I had a, an actual brandy. Last know. last weekend for me when I consumed far too much. Well, there we go. <laughs> but on that note, so the end all is uh, yeah, your vanilla bean. Brandy age barrel, brandy barrel age. Man. Just really, uh, just really tasted, knocked it out of the park, man. Good, good money job. Um, that being said, you guys are still doing great. And you almost you know, tried to pronounce the name. I was like, like that. No, no, no. I mean, it's a phenomenal brew. It really is. I'm gonna love enjoying the entire rest of the bottle. Yeah. In spurts. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, without further ado, cheers. cheers.